Premiere Pro's new masking tool is insane. This tutorial will give you an overview of the new tool they've introduced. Let's take a look. It's a new feature, so at this point in time, it's still in beta. If you have access to Creative Cloud, you can access beta by going to the beta tab, click install if you haven't already installed it, and if you have already, click on open. So what this feature does is cut objects out a bit like a rotoscope in After Effects, which enables us to put things behind the subject like text. And if you do this process a lot, you know it's a bit of a faff, but this new object mask tool is slightly different, much quicker and much easier, and it's built into Premiere Pro. Check this out. So grab yourself a clip, chuck it on the timeline. We'll keep the sequence settings as it is and click on the clip, go to properties and fit the clip to the sequence size by clicking on this fit icon here. And then what we're gonna do is cut out this guy here by using the object mask tool. All we need to do is make sure the clip is selected, select the object mask tool. It will take a quick moment to analyze the clip and click on the object we want to mask. And this is where Premiere Pro has really stepped up the game. And what it means is you'll no longer have to leave Premiere Pro to go to any other app to get this done. So all we do from here is go to effect controls. You can see the object mask there and then just press the play button. That will then begin applying the mask to the whole clip. So it's using AI to do this. And as you can see at the top left, it's creating keyframes as it goes along. And you'll find the process is very smooth as it rolls along with no glitches. So let's speed that up. That took just under two minutes. And as you can see, all the keyframes are in place. If we zoom into this line, you can see that it's made up of a bunch of keyframes and that is our mask. So what we now need to do is decide what we want to do with the mask. And probably the most common thing we will do with it is copy it by right clicking the object mask and going down to copy or control C or command C and paste it to the opacity. And what that will do is mask everything other than the object. And if you press play, you can see it moving there. So one of the most common uses for masking is to add text behind the object. And to do this, we need to duplicate the clip. Select the clip, hold down Alt, drag upwards, and that will create a copy. What I'll then do is go to the bottom clip and delete the object mask from the opacity on that clip. So we have the original on the bottom and the opacity mask on the top with a gap in between where we'll put the text. So let's head to the text icon, the T here, and then click anywhere in the program monitor where we want to write the text. Let's type out a word. I'll just style that up in properties. I'll go for the font style named Inter and use the functions in properties to size it and have it aligned. And now for the fun bit, let's take that text and sandwich it in between our two clips. Let's play that back. To add some depth, we might want to add some shadow to the guy here on the top track. But if we add the shadow directly to the object mask, we won't see it because the shadow will be masked out. The solution to that would be to create a nest out of the mask. So right click the mask clip, select nest, name it, click OK, head to effects, search for drop shadow, drag that onto the nest. I'll just tweak the drop shadow settings by clicking on the effects icon here, going to effect controls, looking for drop shadow in the effect controls and going through each setting to get the look that I want. And then play that back so we can now see the shadow against the text. Just gives it a bit more depth. So that was a pretty easy object to mask. Let's test it against something with a bit more movement and a bit more detail. So I'll head over to my project bin. I've got a clip of someone skating, which gives the object mask a bit more to do. I'll track that on the timeline, fit the clip properly to the sequence, select the clip, click object mask. It will analyze the clip. I'll select the object. And you can see here it selected the person but not the skateboard, which is actually pretty mad how it's differentiated the person from the skateboard. But it's no biggie, just click the skateboard and it would include that in the object. And then same as before, head up to effect controls and press play on the object mask. It will analyze the clip, create the keyframes. And before I copy the keyframes, I'm gonna extend the text on the second track and duplicate the top track, put it on the bottom, then I'll copy the mask and paste it to the opacity on the top track. Let's see how that looks. That's not a bad effort. So last test, same deal, all the same steps. But this one, we've got a girl with long hair. Could be tricky for the mask tool, this one. So let's see how it goes. I'll set it up in the same way and let's see how that looks. So as good as this new tool is with its basic settings like feather, expansion, opacity, and a few more, it's not extensive like After Effects. So for real fine tuning, like the hair on this clip, you may want to head back to After Effects to use the refine tool to ensure you get that professional touch. But considering the job this has done with the ease of use and simplicity, depending on what you're working on, it does a great job for what it is. 
For me, this tool is going to open up so many creative options. Let's have a look at what else we can do. So if we select the top clip here and then go to the blend mode under opacity, if we change that to subtract, that'll bring whatever's on the track below inside the mask. So I'll just undo that and then maybe change the blend mode in the opacity on the text layer to see how that looks. I'll choose difference. Let's see how that looks on the other clips. Pretty cool. I'll just undo that. Now let's try replacing the background with something abstract. I'll move the top two tracks up. That's the clips with the masks and also the text by grouping them and pressing Alt and the up arrow, leaving the background on the bottom track. So we can now insert a new background into that gap. I'm gonna grab an overlay from the Solid Coast Tag Massive collection. Let's go for something colorful. This long glass will do. I'll drag that into the gap that we've created and duplicate it a few times to fill the space. Nice, so that's taking it a bit abstract. And then maybe if we change the blend mode on the text again back to exclusion by selecting the text layer and going to effect controls and then back to the object mask under opacity choose blend mode and go for exclusion and now the text is contrasting well with the graffiti and what about if we try and put the overlay inside the mask rather than outside to do this i'll get rid of the nest i'll copy the bottom clip the original one paste it on the top track copy the mask paste it into the opacity on the top clip I don't want the text, so I'll hide that. Then go to the opacity mask and set the blend mode to subtract. That brings everything on the tracks below inside the mask. Cool, so the new masking tool in Premiere Pro is gonna save loads of time. And talking of time saving, check out the Solid Coast Essentials Effects Pack. The link's in the description down below. There's a whole bunch of effects, just drag and drop to easily add that smooth and professional touch to your vids. Transitions, caption effects, reveals, fluid motion effects. Saves me hours, I reckon it will save you hours too. Go grab it, see ya.